back to the channel. I'm Justin from Salmon Creek Living and today we're installing this Toppins off-grid gate opener. This gate opener is model A5131. It comes with the actuator, the control unit, the power supply unit, the mountain hardware, and two remotes. The solar panels are model TSQ20W and they will need to be purchased separately. This system is powered by two 12-volt lithium batteries. The batteries are tied together in series to create 24 volts and those two batteries stay charged by that 20 watt solar panel. Everything is housed inside of this weatherproof box and the box comes with a deep freezer style key to keep it locked. This is probably the most affordable gate opener on the market. Stick around to the end and we'll tell you about our special discount code. This is how we installed it. You are gonna need something nice to match your control units too and also the solar panel. So I'm gonna make some two by sixes from this post to the light pole. Then we'll just cut those two by sixes to link with the Dewalt. No matter what I'm doing, I like to look down my board and make sure the crane is up. I'm gonna fasten this top board flush with my six by six post. I'm gonna use this quick lamp to hold up one side while I secure the side to the six by six. Then I'll come to this side and use my four foot level to get the board level. The quick clamp didn't work too good on the light pole, so I'm gonna just use a screw to hold the next board up. I want a little bit of an air gap so the wind can pass through this without much issues. Now these boards are gonna shrink as they dry some, but I'm gonna go ahead and use a quarter inch bolt as a spacer right now. I'm gonna put one at each end as I secure it, and that'll create a gap to let air pass through. Then I'm gonna use some of these GRK style structural screws for a little extra support. They're not exterior grade, but it'll be okay for this. I'm gonna finish up with a two by eight on top. I went with a two by eight so it covers that six by six post and that two by six that I'd fastened on the front. And this two by eight will give us a nice place to make that solar panel and will also help these two by sixes from not springing in and out. The control boards for this gate opener are all water resistant, but the manual recommends you put them in something for longevity. So we have this nice weatherproof electrical box here. And this is gonna work good for housing all the controls. And being that this is a complete off-grid system, we need somewhere to store the batteries anyway. It comes with mounting brackets, but we're just using inch and a half roofing screws. The rubber washer on that roofing screw will act as a seal to keep any water from penetrating inside the box. I know my board's are level because I just installed them, so I just mount the top of this box flush with the top of one of the boards. I need to drill a couple of holes in my box so I can run the cables through. I'm gonna use cable glands to hold the cables. These are the exact same things that are in the bottom of the control boards that come with the gate opener. I purchased a kit of these. The ones I'm using are PG7 and PG9. PG7 will be for the solar panel cord and the PG9 will be for the cord coming from the actuator. The cool thing about this electrical box, it has this removable cover at the bottom so we can bring this into the shop and drill the holes out more conveniently. I'm gonna put a piece of tape on mine that way my vice grips do not scratch it. I'm gonna pre-drill the holes with a sharp small bit and then I'm gonna finish up with a half inch for the PG-7 and a 5 eighths for the PG-9. Just screw this nut off the gland. Should stick through your hole. Screw the nut back on the top. And we'll go ahead and put the cover back on. Be sure to put your weather stripping on also. I placed the biggest cable gland on the side that's gonna be closest to the actuator. Go ahead and grab these three pieces out of your mountain hardware. There's two of them that look like this. This is the shortest one. We need the short one for the pool to open style. That's what this gate is. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble them. Grab your inch and a half long bolt, run that through the center hole. Flat washer and lock washer on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and make mine straight out like this. The manual has a lot of different specs, but I think they overcomplicate things. Use the small stainless steel bolt to go through one of the holes to hold it in place. A 17 millimeter and you can tighten that biggest one up and we'll just leave the small one loose for now in case we do have to make some adjustments. With the gate closed I want to find out exactly where my actuator is going to be on this post. I'm going to put my actuator kind of low. I have a piece of the mounting bracket that connects to the ram end of the actuator and I'm going to go ahead and stick it up here get it so these bolt holes are about center way of the tubing and I'm just going to take a quick clamp and hold that in place. That way I can see about how high that's going to be. I'm going to set a level on here, get it level, and then make a mark on my post. And that line is going to let me know exactly where the center of this actuator is going to be. That way I can put the bracket on here and have it the perfect height. So I know my post is already level, so I'm just going to gauge by the side of this, get it about half inch from the outside, make some marks where the hole is going to be. These are the bolts they supply for making this bracket to a post. I think they're about three eighths. I'm gonna use an auger bit that's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure this maybe is a 
7 sixteenths or one half. And the bigger holes plus the slots that they have in the brackets will give us a little room for adjustment if everything isn't quite lined up properly. A flat washer and a lock washer will go on the opposite side of each bolt. And with a 17 millimeter wrench, we'll go ahead and tighten these up. So now we'll go ahead and open the gate up. We're gonna get it a bite where we want it to be when it's open. I won't mind just a little past 90, maybe a 95 degree angle. We'll go ahead and stick the actuator on. Use the small pin to go through that hole. We got a clip pin. And now we can determine exactly where we need this bracket to be on the ram end. So we're just gonna get everything lined up with the gate open where we want it to be. So right there looks good to me. I'll get it lined back up with the center of my tubing and mark out the holes. And I'm gonna pre-drill through this tubing with a small bit and then I'll finish it off with a 3 8 inch bit. And they provide these three inch bolts for this bracket. And again, a washer and a lock washer. If you have a gate like this, don't over tighten these. You'll just end up squeezing your tubing together. We'll open the gate back up, insert the longer pin. Toppins provides this key. This key will release the actuator, make it so it can push and pull freely. We're going to open up this flap, insert this key, and turn it clockwise 90 degrees. And now we can freely operate the actuator. With the actuator in the free position, I just want to open and close it a few times. Just be sure everything's operating smoothly and nothing is binding with the brackets in the actuator. And for the solar panels, I'm just going to lay them flat on the workspace. We have these long brackets that are going to hold them together. Put your bolt through. Put your nut on the back side. The support frame will go on the bottom panel. It's gonna take some patience to get all the nuts on. It is a little tight working here. A 10 millimeter wrench and a Phillips head screw everything tight. And finally, we can put this piece of the bracket on. To make life easier, go ahead and make the support bracket to the support frame before you put the frame on the panel. Don't do like I'm doing. And I'll go ahead and connect my wires. It comes with this extra pigtail for tying these two together in parallel. Just take and go red to red, yellow to yellow. Same thing on the other panel. And then we can connect our extension cord and this will actually run to the power supply unit. Toppins does not supply a bar or anything to mount your solar panel. So I'm just using a piece of three quarter inch black iron pipe that I had laying around. I primed it gray. This one is five foot long. I've drilled a couple of holes in it. The holes are two inches on center to match the bracket on the solar panel. I'm gonna take my level to get a straight line. Then I'm gonna use my U-bolt and a hammer to just kind of stamp where the holes are gonna be. Drill those out with a bit, a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. The U-bolts that I'm using are inch and an eighth by three and a half inches and they're a quarter inch in diameter. I'm gonna get every one of them started in the holes and a quick clamp will hold that pipe up until we can get it secured in place. I'll stick the plate into two nuts on the opposite side. I'm using two inch bolts, a quarter inch in diameter to mine it to the ball. Seven sixteenths and we'll tighten those up. We'll choose what height we want it. I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. I live in the northern hemisphere so I want this facing the southern sky and slightly to the west. I like that and I'll go ahead and tighten those U-bolts up. The reason I turn my panel slightly to the west is because these trees block all the sun until about 12 or 1 o'clock and I wanted the panels to be able to take advantage of as much evening sun as possible. I am going to wrap these connectors in some electrical tape just to make them a little more weatherproof. And to make that cable look a little neater, I'm going to use these fence clips and some roofing screws. Just don't over tighten them if you use something like this so you don't cut your cable. And we'll go ahead and make the power supply and the control board in here now. Four Phillips head screws, remove the cover. At that point, it's going to expose four holes. That way we can make the box. This electrical box is metal, so I'm going to have to pre-drill these holes to run a screw through. I'm going to pre-drill two holes while holding the box, and then I can run two screws in and pre-drill the other side. I just use regular deck screws to make the power supply and control unit. You can use anything you have laying around. Just don't use something with a very big head because it will not fit into the mounting holes properly. Be sure not to over tighten these because this box is plastic. You can break it. And we'll do the same thing for the power supply unit. And now we can wire this thing up. Grab your cord coming from your actuator. It's actually got a label on here that tells you exactly how to wire it up. We want to feed it in through that large cable gland we installed earlier. Unscrew our nut, slide it over the cord, and then slide the cord in the bottom. And when you screw the nut back on that cable gland, that's going to hold the cord so you can't pull the cord in or out. Then we're going to come here to our control box, which is the small box, and do the same thing again. Run it up through the cable gland. Grab the plug on the far right. It'll pull right out. And with the small flathead screwdriver, loosen all the screws 
And from left to right, it's red, black, blue, green, and yellow. And we'll just plug that back in. Pull the cord down a little bit and secure the cable gland. And then we'll grab the far right cord on the power supply, which is already installed. And when I grab the center cord that's on the control panel, that's already installed also. Connect the red wire to the red and the yellow to the yellow. Then we have the cord coming from our solar panels that we previously installed. We're gonna run that through the small cable gland that we put on the bottom of our box earlier. And we're gonna take the first small cord, which would be the second cord on the power supply unit. And we're gonna wire the red to the red on the solar panel and the yellow to the yellow. These wires are pre-stripped, but I'm gonna strip them a little more to expose some more wire. Then I'm just using some small wire nuts that we had laying around to secure it. Be sure no sun is shining on your solar panel while you're doing this. That way they're not making any current. There are three switches on the control unit that you'll have to consult your manual about if you're using this system as a push to open. But being this is a pull to open, everything will stay exactly how it is from the factory. This is a 24 volt system, so we have two options to get 24 volts out of a battery. We can purchase a 24 volt, which is going to be $500 or better or we can actually tie two 12 volt batteries together in series. And that's what the manual recommends. Now I've chose to go with lithium batteries, which are gonna last longer. You're gonna get 10 years out of them, no problem. These batteries are gonna run you about 160 bucks for a pair. You can get two lead acid batteries for about 60 bucks. I'll link both of them below. But in the long run, you're gonna be better off to go with the lithium. The lithium will operate at more extreme temperatures and you can also lay them down if you want to. A lead acid battery is gonna have to be up at all times. But we're gonna go ahead and stick them in here. That power cord will not be used for this off-grid system. So we're just gonna leave him hanging out. I'm gonna connect the batteries in series with some 10 gauge wire. I purchased this at my local auto parts store. It was about 12 bucks for this roll. So I wasn't gonna spend another 12 bucks to buy a roll of black also, but you can do whatever you want. I'm just gonna use red for both pieces. The yellow terminals like this are made for 10 and 12 gauge wire. We'll take and crimp one of these eyes on each end. So when I connect it to the negative on one battery and the positive on the other battery, and then I'm gonna make another little pigtail, put a battery terminal on one end, and then I'm using a female connect like this on the opposite end. I'm gonna make two of these. One of those will connect to the positive on one battery and the negative on the other. And an eight millimeter wrench will tighten these terminals down. And that's how you connect batteries in series. Then we're gonna grab this cord right here, which is the battery supply cord. Now I'm gonna have to modify the one they have on here because I'm using the lithium batteries and they have different terminals. So I'm gonna cut their stuff off, restrip it, and then crimp on some male terminals. I'm using the blue ones for this size wire. Plug their yellow wire into your negative and their red wire into your positive. Don't get confused if you used all red like I did. Double check on the actual battery terminals, but that's what it should look like when you're finished. And I'm just gonna wrap those terminals in some electrical tape to keep them from hitting each other. And now we can program the remote, but first let's go back over here to our actuator and be sure we have that back into operating position. We want to put the key on there and turn it 90 degrees clockwise. To program the remote, we come over here to the control board and we're gonna press this button. You'll see the red light will light up and then press this button twice within two seconds and that remote should be learned. I have to be within 40 or 50 feet of my gate before the remote can work. And I think that's majorly in part to it being inside of that metal box. If you're not using a metal box, you'll probably get more distance out of your remote. Now it's gonna be a good time to set the stop on here. So first we want to flip the actuator over upside down. This just make it easier to see what we're doing. So we're gonna flip it over, put our pins back in. And my gate will not close all the way. The actuator is actually running out of rod. So we're gonna pull this bolt back out and adjust this bracket over just one more hole. And that'll let the actuator push the gate around a little further. And it's just trial and error with a limit switch. Open and close the gate. It's closing too far, so I'm gonna pull it back. The limit switch needs to go back. And you just have to play with it till you're satisfied with how it's shutting. Mine is now shutting tight against my stop on my gate. And then just tighten your limit switch down with a Phillips head screwdriver. This limiter switch was a little finicky to set. If your gate is not closing far enough, you'll push the limiter switch out. If your gate is closing too far out, you pull the limiter switch back. 
It's just gonna take some trial and error. It took me three or four times to get it set exactly how I wanted it. And that it was satisfied with how the gate closes. We turned the actuator back over, right side up, put our clip pins in, tighten this second bolt up. And we got to do something with this limiter switch cable. So I'm gonna just kind of tuck it back up in this track, wrap it once or twice in some electrical tape. And that's probably good enough, but I'm gonna stick one of these stainless steel zip ties on it anyway. If you're looking for an affordable driveway alarm, check this one out. We've had this one about four years. I think I paid 50 bucks for it off Amazon. I'll link it below. It has a little solar panel at the top to keep the battery charged. We're quite a ways away from the house and we always get the signal anybody drives by. However, it is infrared, so anytime a deer or a coyote or Bigfoot, anything like that walks by, you will get a false alarm. The unit is expandable. I know you can buy extra receivers for it. We've always said we would purchase one and put in our shop, but we never have. We just have one inside the house. And you want your cables to have a downward loop in them like this. That way when water runs down the cable, it will drip down here and it won't actually be able to make it up even to this cable gland. The gate moves at a good slow and steady pace, which I think is acceptable. You don't want your gate slamming open and closed. My solar panels are only 20 watts. Now that is supplying us with enough power. We have not drained these batteries yet, but we only open and close our gate twice per day. If you live in a high traffic area, you may want to supply more power to your batteries. This system will handle, I believe, up to 240 watts. You can go right to Amazon, purchase you a couple of 100 watt panels. They'll be 12 volts, tie them together in series to create 24 volts and you'll be good to go. And the great thing about this gate opener is if you have power already to your gate, you don't even have to buy the solar panels and the battery. You can just plug it right in this cord and you're good to go. So Toppins has many different models of gate openers to choose from. You can go to their website and look up exactly what gates you have, the weight and everything. For reference, my gate is from Tractor Supply. It is a 16 foot, it's roughly 75 pounds. And that works great for this actuator. As far as the quality to price ratio, you're not going to find a better product than this. It is a very good quality product and the price is just unbeatable. Toppins did send us out the gate opener and the solar panels to try out, but everything else was purchased with our own money. There's a link below to their website and if you use code SCL11, you'll save 11% on all gate openers and we will receive a small commission at no extra cost to you and we'd greatly appreciate it. We'll also provide links to some other products we use in the video like this box and the batteries. Check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.